Dear students, I welcome you back for this screencast video. In this video, we are going to discuss about the fourth question. That is a detailed account on mass production of blue-green algae. The other name for blue-green algae is cyanobacteria. So it is also a kind of bacteria which has been present in different kinds of environment. Why the cyanobacteria is also referred as a blue-green algae is mainly due to the presence of the blue-green pigments there in this algae that includes the phycoerythrin as well as phycocyanin. Now we look at the various environments in which a cyanobacteria could be present. The first image shows the presence of cyanobacteria in a small rivers. The image B and C shows the presence of cyanobacteria in certain shallow as well as stagnant freshwater bodies. The images D, E and F shows the presence of cyanobacteria there in the freshwater in the Arctic regions of the world. The image shows under the G refers to soil crust that have been formed there with the help of the cyanobacteria which has been recorded in the Utah region of the US. These are some of the images of the marine dwelling cyanobacteria. Say for example the image A shows the cyanobacteria that have been occurring there in the ocean and the image C shows the cyanobacteria that have been associated there with the nematophores that is on the breathing roots that have been present there in the mangrove plants whereas the uh, E image shows the type of cyanobacteria that are abundant there in the salt pans and the image G shows the presence of cyanobacteria there in the ocean especially near the Park Strait. The cyanobacteria can able to promote the growth of lowland paddy that is BGA can able to supply fixed nitrogen to the paddy plants. So this blue green algae or cyanobacteria on application at 10 kg per hectare one week after rice transplantation they can able to contribute 25 to 30 kg of nitrogen per hectare. Certain other research studies also shows that BGA is more economical compared to usage of other fertilizers and it also reduces the cultivation cost. Approximately you can able to save 1000 rupees per acre when you are using blue green algae as a biofertilizer there in the rice crop. It also increases the value of the crop mainly when it is grown in an organic farming situation. Application of a blue green algae increases the biomass and soil moisture especially for the next crop mainly certain pulse crop that have been taken in the rice field. Now we look at some more points related to the blue green algae. They are commonly present there in the tropical rice field and they are involved there in the nitrogen fixation. The favorable condition for their growth includes light, water, high temperature and nutrient availability. And the beneficial effect of the algal inoculation on the rice grain yield could be documented when they are using different kinds of cultures together. That is commonly referred as the composite cultures. Allow them two or three species mixed together and applied on a field. For example, Anabina, Nostac, Vestilopsis, Tolipotrix, Oscillatoria, they are all found to be more effective when applied together compared to that of using a single culture inoculation. Allow the Veru Anabina vio, la Nostac yo, matto inoculate panda the vida. In the Anji species yo, one inoculate panda, adodaya. Effect on the rumba jasti. Now we will look at the mass multiplication steps of the BGA. So these are all the various methods by which you can able to mass multiply this blue green algae. Cemented tank method, shallow metal troughs method, polythene light method. This is a method that will be best suitable for small and marginal group of farmers, mainly for a large scale multiplication of this BGA biofertilizer. And the last and an important method is the field method of mass multiplication of BGA. Though this BGA can be mass multiplied by several methods, the two methods that I have shown in bold are important there from the application there in the field of agriculture. First one is the polythene lined method. 
for this method you have to prepare pits of 1.5 meter width that are covered with a polythene sheet and in that you need to transfer 2 to 3 kilogram of soil and 100 gram of superphosphate and water will be added to the pit to about a height of 10 centimeter. You can use lime for adjusting the pH. So the polythene sheet based multiplication will be looking something like this. To the pit covered with the polythene sheet, you need to add 2 ml of insecticide carbofuran. It's mainly to prevent the multiplication of the mosquitoes there in that particular locality. Next, mix the water well so that the contents will get more mixed and finally the soil particles will be allowed to settle down there on the pit. When water becomes much clear, you can go for sprinkling 100 grams of a blue-green algae starter culture on the surface of the water. This starter culture need to be separately purchased from some places, say for example from an agricultural university in a microbiology department you can able to purchase the starter culture. So that need to be sprinkled there in the water. That is the one which is going to be further mass multiplied. So you look at in the fifth point, during mass multiplication the water level need to be continuously maintained for a 1 centimeter and temperature of that particular environment should be 35 to 40 degrees centigrade. It should be in a summer time which allows a good multiplication of the cyanobacteria or the BGA. After 15 days of multiplication, the algal mass is separated from the soil that is referred as a flakes. The mass multiplied algal mat will be looking like this. That is after the 15 days of multiplication. When you allow the water to get completely evaporated, they form into a flakes that appear in this way. So, what I have shown there in the left hand side are the flakes. The algal flakes are collected, powdered and packed in polythene bags. The powdered BGA will be looking like this. This image shows the pit method by which the algae is getting multiplied. So these are all certain tank method or trough method by which the algae is multiplied. This is also an image which depicts how BGA can be multiplied there in a large tanks. Apart from that, there are other ways also in which it can be multiplied. Say for example, you look at this image. So this is actually a shallow trace that are all galvanized with the iron sheet or permanent tank like thing in which the BGA will be multiplied. So when they are going for a any kind of a mass multiplication, as we have already discussed, a composite mixture or a composite culture that composed of 5 to 6 different kind of regionally acclimatized BGA strains are mixed together and used. Say for example, commonly they go for using an anabina, alocera, cylindrospermum, gliotrachea, nostoc, plectonema and tolipotrix as a composite culture for mass multiplication. Next we look at the field method in which the BGA is multiplied. In this method, an area of 40 meter square is selected which is near to the water source that is with the dimension of 20 meter into 2 meter and it should be directly exposed to the sunlight as sunlight is very important for mass multiplication of this BGA as they are carbon fixers and nitrogen fixers. Make a bund all around the plot to a height of 15 centimeter and give it a coating with the mud to prevent loss of water due to percolation. Plot is well prepared and leveled uniformly and water is allowed to stand for a depth of 5 to 7.5 cm and it is left to settle that is soil particles were allowed to settle for a 12 hours. After that 2 kg of superphosphate is added mainly to supply the phosphorus nutrient there for the multiplication of the BGA and 200 gram of lime is added to each plot uniformly mainly to lower or adjust the pH of that particular soil. The soil based composite culture of BGA which we have already discussed that is a composite culture is the one in which 5 to 6 different kinds of cyanobacteria or blue green algae are coexisting. Say here they say even 8 to 10 species containing composite culture can be used 
it need to be powdered well and it will be broadcasted at the rate of 5 kg per plot. Then you need to apply carbofuran as we have seen in the previous method. The reason is carbofuran will prevent the insects that are all occurring there in the stagnant water. Water is let in at a periodic intervals so that the height of the water level will be always maintained at a 5 cm. After a period of 5 days after the initial inoculation, the plots were allowed to dry up in the sun and the algal flakes are collected as we have seen in the previous method and they are all dried, powdered and then stored for the future use. This image showing the BGA that has been getting multiplied and present there naturally in a paddy field. These are also certain images related to collection of the algal flakes that have been taking place there in certain Southeast Asian countries and the powdering the content that has also been shown here in this image. Finally, we look at a few points later to how BGA is applied there in the rice field. So, a soil based inoculum that has been previously prepared as a algal flakes is applied there in the rice field using the following method. The soil based algal flakes are powdered very well and it is mixed with 10 kg of soil or sand. The BGA is inoculated on 7 to 10 days after rice transplanting. After the application of the BGA, water level need to be maintained for 3 to 4 inch that is from the time of BGA inoculation. Then it will be allowed to multiply for a month. That is maximum BGA biomass will be increasing over the period of one month the whole BGA will be further dried and it will be applied there in the rice paddy field itself. So this is the image that shows how a BGA has got multiplied there in the rice field. So this multiplied BGA will be further puddled there into the rice field.